In this video, I'm going to be doing a reaction video. Now, these are not things I commonly do, but recently the Lord has been saying to do reaction videos. It's something I have been swaying away from just because I do not want to attach myself to the drama of the world or where the world is going. But it's important that we expose the unfruitful deeds of the wicked and bring it to the light. Because if not us, then who will? In Ephesians 5.11, it says, take no part in the unfruitful works of darkness, but instead expose them. The Lord has been pushing me into the area of reaction because there is a lot of things that are happening, that are going on, and the world, a lot of the times, it wants to brush it under the rug and move on, but it's important for salvation, but also just to show the truth that we bring these things to the light to show the fruit of it, of how wicked it actually is, whether it's religions, whether it's events, whatever it may be, it's important that we're engaged with the events of the world. And it's not something I entirely want to do just because a lot of the times it can grieve the spirit when you're so nested in unfruitful events, just constantly being bombarded with that and seeing that in your eye gates and your ear gates because you have to protect the eye gates because what enters the eye gates is what enters the temple. So it's important that we protect that. In this video, I just want to bring this to the light because behind the scenes, this was something that grieved my spirit. It was something that had me questioning a lot of different things and I'm talking about the stabbing that happened in Sydney to Bishop Mari Mari Emmanuel who has a lot of great teachings there was a lot of great sermons but there was also a lot of men of God you know Abednego who brought up these videos of how he is a Catholic which is adding Mary into the equation which by no means is okay no scripture inside of the Bible does it say to pray to Mary don't know where people get this idea to bring her into the equation like she is worth praise like she is a way to get to the father like she is in between you pray to her to get to god like that is just demonic and it's not true and it's a lie from the pits of hell now when it comes to mary yes respect her honor her she is a person in the bible but she is only a vessel that is chosen by god and god could have chosen any other woman and done the same thing it's such a strange belief it's like praying to elijah to get to jesus Jesus. Listen, she is dead. She is buried in the ground. You are probably praying to a fallen angel. The only person you pray to is Jesus. And that's what his foundation was built on is Catholicism, which is not a great foundation because it's not scriptural truth. You know, a lot of the times, so many people in the body of Christ, they love to be the accuser of the brethren. They love to do Satan's job and accuse and accuse and accuse and attack. And this is wrong. This is wrong. This is wrong. That is a pharisaical spirit to always pinpoint what is wrong. That is literally what the Pharisees were doing with Jesus. They were cross-examining, trying to figure out his faults and what was wrong. So if you're in that realm, you really have to check what spirit you're in. If you're constantly critiquing, if your ministry is constantly critiquing, rebuking, like what spirit are you truly operating in if that's where you're coming from? Now, when it comes to things that are quite huge, like yes, Catholicism or somebody's in crazy sin, in, or they have a stripper inside of their church like John Lindell. Like, yes, rebuke that. But when it comes to the body of Christ, you know, you are brothers and sisters and we all are different and we all have different gifts. In the body of Christ, there is an arm, there is an eye, there is different gifts, there's different moves of God. There needs to be businessmen as well in the body of Christ. Why is that? Because if you have the wisdom to save the city but not the resources, people, they'll blow you off. What can you do? But without resources, what really can you do? So business is also very important. And when it comes to Bishop Mari Mari, you know that he loves Jesus, that he is a servant of Christ, that he has some great teachings that will bring people to Christ. I know a lot of those teachings have edified me, have strengthened my faith, have brought me into Christ. And that's the thing that people don't understand, that everybody serves a purpose. I remember coming to Christ and I was listening to T.D. Jakes and Joel Osteen, and it's because I was still quite attached to the world to where deep meaty teaching didn't really attract me because it was way too convicting but 
the motivational, inspirational, watered down kind of stuff was the stuff I was listening to because it was relatable and I could understand it. Before I came to Christ, salvation, eternal life, all of these things, I couldn't really understand it. So, you know, even if these people are so far off, they will still be reeling in souls to some extent. When it comes to Bishop Mari Mari, I feel like he just has been brought up in a church with wrong teaching and that's where his roots grown. And honestly, I don't know all of the context when it comes to all of his teachings. So it's not really something I can speak about. But at the end of the day, I know that he is bringing people to Christ. And that is for sure with everything that he is doing. When this happened behind the scenes, I was grieving inside of the spirit because I didn't understand. I seen this stabbing happen and I'm like, well, God is our refuge. God is our high tower. And in my mind, I'm like, well, why did that happen? But we do see this, whether it's street preachers, they do get shot or something happens and you have to look at it from different perspectives like is this an exposure by god because we know that judgment happens in the church first is this an exposure like is there just false teaching to where god is like no i'm not having this to where he allowed the enemy to attack him or god took him out due to false teaching or is it real teaching minus the mary stuff and the enemy came for him due to the truth it really did confuse me or is it just persecution but that's how it is you know you see some street preachers who do get shot or something happens and the reason being i believe is you know sometimes i feel like it is god exposing radical exposure There's so many ways this can go and i just don't have enough context but you see it sometimes with street preachers who are in their flesh they're not in the spirit they're not in that gps navigational system they don't have discernment of i'm gonna go to this place to street preach oh, i probably shouldn't do that they don't listen to the inkling of the holy spirit and they put themselves in jeopardizing situations in places and it happens to some street preachers either or it's still a wicked act but yeah the reason that this attack happened is because bishop mari mari was just talking about all the false gods and was bringing up prophet muhammad and one of the believers decided in his heart that i'm gonna kill person because he offended my prophet which is absolutely ridiculous and it just shows the lack of self-control the wickedness in the heart and honestly the heart of the religion and the, just the fruit of it a lot of the times media will turn this into a race war to bring hate towards muslims and never attach muslims to islam because there's a lot of muslims who know that this is wicked they know that this is evil why because they have a conscious in their religion they say murder is fine you back up murder with religion and then it's okay. No, it's not. It's wicked and it's evil and it's disgusting. Murder in general. If Christianity said, hey, murder unbelievers, I would not be a Christian. Even atheists easily know murder is wrong. It's quite obvious. It's one of the most wickedest things you can do. But in Islam, that's what they do to unbelievers. That's what they do to Christians. That's what they do to Jews. That's how they push forward their religion. That's why it's the fastest growing because it's a fear-based religion of bow or will kill you or will oppress you or whatever it may be it's literally just like satan that's what the government does they oppress to get their way and that's what this religion does they oppress to get their way in leviticus 1934 the foreigner residing among you must be treated as your native born love them as yourself for you were foreigners in egypt i am the lord your god so it doesn't matter what is stirring up in the spirit or what fruit this religion is producing you still have to love them and when it comes to foreigners when it comes to anybody, you still have to love them. The reason being is because Jesus is going to come back one day. You can play your part in this world. You can have your foot in this world. You can help this world, but you're not going to change this world and certain wicked people's hearts and motives or what they're going to do in this world. When it comes to this world and where it's going, a lot of Christians, we're just waiting for Jesus Christ because he's the only one who can bring real true peace. I know a lot of Muslims are saying, well, he's just radical. Well, don't we all get more radical in our faith as the end times speed up because we want to go with our God? And when you look at a real Muslim and how they're supposed to be, they're supposed to kill everybody who doesn't submit to Allah to make a one world religion. And they're allowed to lie to spread their religion. They're allowed to manipulate. And also what they do is they befriend when they are weaker, when they don't have the upper hand, it says in the Quran to act like they are friends. And then once 
once they have the upper hand, that's when they turn into the oppressor and that's when they bring like Sharia law. But we are called to love. We are called to love all people, whether it's people who are in Islam, even radical, you are called to pray for them. And the reason being is because we know that Jesus Christ is the only way to heaven. We will give an account, all of us, every tongue will confess, every knee will bow. And you better be following the commandments of Jesus, which says to love everybody. <laughs> So that is just pure wickedness. And the reason that happened is because he is saying that that bishop offended his prophet. You know how many people offend Jesus Christ, persecute, attack wherever around the world? The most persecuted religion in the world is Christianity. And guess what Christians do? Absolutely nothing. And the reason being is because we don't feel the need to defend our God. God is our vindicator. Vengeance is in the hand of God. Earthquakes, natural disasters disaster shifting we see things happen in the spiritual realm that are from god to where we don't have to say things there's so many signs there's so many wonders there's so many things to where you actually fear god you submit and it's all about actual peace actual love actual forgiveness and there's no way you're going to sit here and tell me that that comes from god that that's how you get into heaven is murder one of the wickedest things one of the most disturbing things you could do the biggest sin you can do that's how you get into heaven that is is so demonic and some muslims are saying he is just a radical islamist we do not side with him and the thing about it is he was actually doing what his religion teaches him to do which is to kill the jews which is to kill the infidels which is to kill the christians cut them up into pieces behead them kill the unbelievers like if you have ever read the quran don't ever listen to somebody who follows it because one thing you got to understand is they are allowed to lie if it helps advance the quran or or their religion, they are allowed to manipulate and lie. And here's another thing, they act friendly because in the Quran it says, if you are overpowered to act friendly until you have the upper hand and that's when you will begin to see the wicked fruits. And just the fruit of the Quran is so demonic. Muhammad raped a nine-year-old girl. There was accusations that he was demon-possessed. When he met the angel inside of the cave, he was afraid, he was frightened and he ran out screaming and all of the disgusting sins that he committed. He had wives and he's saying that heaven is this place filled with women and people who go there will have an erect penis and it's a brothel with all the women of your liking, which is temptation and lust, which comes from the flesh and it comes from Satan. Like it is all just so corrupt and it's all so backwards and it's all packaged into religion. The reason, you know, it is the fastest growing religion is because it's fear based. With Jesus, people choose that with islam they will kill you or they will oppress you or they will go that route to indoctrinate you and if you leave the faith they will kill you like the whole thing is demonic and if you believe that's heaven you can walk that out but there is no way that that's how you enter into heaven and with christianity what are the most important commandments it says to love thy neighbor as yourself it's all about love it's all about forgiveness not a single lick of it is about violence it's all about forgiveness it's all about love. It's all about the fruits of the spirit. It's about giving to the needy. It's about giving to the poor. And of course, Islam would take those traits so they could package it up. Christianity is truly the only way to heaven. When I think of heaven, I think of angels. I think of bliss. I think of justice. I think of peace. I think of love. I think of no violence. I think of no murder. I think of childlikeness, that purity of being like a child. You know, if you think that's how you get into heaven, you are deeply disturbed. It says the God of this world, the little G God of this world is Satan. The prince and the power of the air is Satan. And what does he do in the media, in Hollywood? He oppresses, he uses fear to get people to back up or to get people to shrink. That's what the media does. That's what the government does. And that's the same thing that Quran does. And that's the fruit of it. It's just of this world, but it's actually way more demonic. Every tongue will confess and every knee will bow. And the Quran is just so demonic and their heaven is so demonic demonic and the fruit is so demonic.
And a lot of them are saying that this is just a radical Islamist. The thing about it is, don't we all turn radical when the times speed up as end times progress? Don't we all get more radical in our faith? As for Christians, wouldn't they get more loving, more forgiving? Wouldn't they fear the Lord even more? Wouldn't they make sure that they're walking righteously, uprightly, and vice versa? You know, some people truly still have a heart and a soul and a mind, and they can see this and know that it's wicked, and they want to flee. They want to escape. But the thing about it is you do leave these and your family will disown you if you leave Islam or in other countries in the Middle East they will kill you so a lot of people they see this and they know it's wrong hopefully but yet maybe there's just some fear pray for the Muslims that they will wake up because this is not okay even an atheist could look at this and know that this is straight from the pits of hell because if you believe to get into heaven you have to commit one of the most disturbing sinful acts imaginable which is bloodshed especially innocent and bloodshed like in the Quran it says that they want to have a one world religion and that they will kill Jews they will kill Christians they will kill all unbelievers why how does that even make sense? How do you get into heaven by killing the most innocent people on earth? They say that they're their enemies when they're the most innocent people on earth. And the reason why it is, is because Satan is the god of this world and he has blinded the minds of unbelievers and obviously they attack the truth. When it comes to the Quran, it's just a intricate book that was created to completely oppose God. If you look in the Quran, it's against everything that Jesus has done and it was after. And when it comes to the Quran, here's some things you have to understand that they are allowed to lie to push forward their religion they're allowed to manipulate and in the scriptures our scriptures it says that satan is a liar there is no truth in him he has been lying from the very beginning and they're allowed to lie and when it comes to their heaven it's a brothel it says that they will have a very erect penis and they will go into heaven filled with virgins filled with whores filled with it's a brothel and they will have sex which is lust which is temptation how is that that heaven maybe it's heaven for the worldly man who is in a fallen sinful state because as christians flee from youthful lust flee from the devil flee from temptation jesus was fleeing from temptation you don't give in to those things and also there's more scriptures where they be friendly when they have the underhand they pretend to be friendly until they have the upper hand and then you start to see their fruits their oppression their surreal law and you just look at the fruit of the quran the more you dig into it the more disturbing and disgusting it gets and it doesn't really stop <laughs> The alleged assailant, a 16-year-old, was pinned down by churchgoers and police. What people are praying you're gonna come and do this? You're gonna do this. But yeah, that is the fruit that that religion produces a one-way ticket to hell and it's important that you pray and that you follow the commandments of jesus christ because it's no longer secret you see it for what it is or what it's gonna be or what the fruit that it produces is and you come to realize that the only way into heaven is through jesus christ the only holy just god there is is jesus christ no god wants us out here doing those acts who one another and if there was such a god even atheists have a higher moral compass than that god that is straight from the pits of hell i don't know how you could support that but all i know is you better get right when jesus christ returns and you better get in them scriptures this is why us as christians we fear god and we do what god says to do because we know he is the one true living god as for this person he gets offended he acts up in his flesh and he takes matter into his own hands because his god is not going to move. His God's not going to do anything for him. But when it comes to us, we pray for our enemies. We follow the commandments. We pray. And then there's earthquakes. And then there's shift because vengeance belongs to the Lord. And the thing about evil is when an evil act is committed, it retreats and it will play the victim and it'll be like whoa i can't believe you did that but really it's just seeing how far it can be pushed until the next step and that is a part of their religion is to kill unbelievers they want to come across as righteous as holy as doing all of these good deeds it's a nice package from satan to get you to bite the bait very manipulative and it's just not the way to go at all and that's why as christians like why aren't you in an uproar yes we are grieving in the spirit 
spirit, but vengeance and judgment comes from the Lord. And if you have ever read the scripture, seen all of the prophecies and all of the things inside of there, you would know that this is the one true living God who is going to judge the living and the dead. And it is a fearful thing to fall into the hands of a living God. And when it comes to us, we don't have to act on behalf of our God in violent fashions to get our points across. When they are bashing or making fun of Jesus Christ, he can defend himself. And the reason they operate like that is because they are their own gods. They are trying to do the works of God. And what do I mean about that? They're allowed to lie to push forth their scriptures. And the reason they're allowed to lie is because it doesn't speak for itself. And once you unravel it, once you read it, you see what it truly is. When it comes to the gospel, you preach the gospel. And whoever connects to it, whoever resonates to it, they come to it. Why? Because God is the one who's doing the work. When people persecute, when people attack, we don't turn violent to act on behalf of our God. No, because our God said in the end of days, there will be various earthquakes. There will be perilous times. Our God will act on our behalf. We don't have to lash out because our God will separate people. He will bring people down. He will move people out of the way. We don't need to operate in violence because when we're moving in the will of God, when we're moving with the Lord, things work in our way. We're not in our flesh. That's what happens when you have bottled up bitterness, a bottled up jealousy, a bottled up hatred, a bottled up rage, which is just the works of the flesh. What are the works of the flesh? Galatians 5, 19, 21. Now the works of the flesh are evident, which are adultery, fornication, that's their heaven, uncleansliness, lewdness, idolatry, sorcery, hatred, contentions, jealousies, outbursts of wrath, selfish ambitions, dissensions, heresies, envy, murder, drunkenness, revelry, and the like of which I tell you beforehand, just as I told you in the past, that those who practice such things will not inherit the kingdom of God. Obviously, if that was in the kingdom of God, I wouldn't want to be in that kingdom. So if the things I've been delivered from, the lustful woman, temptations, that's where I'm heading. Yeah, I'm going in the di a different direction. And not only that, if it actually gets worse, in the Quran it says that they give you an erect penis to go into heaven to have multiple females. And murder's also allowed in heaven. Actually, that's how you get to heaven. It's just such a backwards journey. And all you can do is just pray, love, and walk accordingly the way that the Lord wants you to walk. Satan will try to get a double whammy and he'll bring also Muslim hate to the equation to where there's more division, more battles between Christians and Muslims or even non-believers and Muslims. They'll try to make a situation worse than it really is. Why? Because Satan is the god of this world and he just wants complete destruction. So on your behalf, it says in Leviticus 19.34, the foreigner residing among you must be treated as your native born. Love them as yourself for you were foreigners in Egypt I am the Lord your God. We want to be in right standing with the Lord because we cannot change the world. We can impact it, but the world is going to do what the world does. So it's important that we get right with Jesus Christ because it's quite obvious that is the only way to heaven, a real heaven. Bishop stabbed by a 16-year-old. Boy's fingers reportedly severed by a parishioner's after attack. So apparently the blade didn't pop out when he did it and it cut his own fingers off and he checked to see if it popped back out to use it again and he states if they didn't insult my prophet i wouldn't have come here now how insecure how much lack of self-control lack of self-discipline does there have to be in one's vessel to lash out listen we all get negative attacks the enemy will attack our minds and plant seeds that are demonic. And that's why the Bible says, casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalteth itself against the knowledge of God and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ because the enemy will impart these seeds. And the thing about this religion is the enemy has not only imparted those seeds, but also programmed water and bloomed those seeds to where it's just fully demonic. But yeah, here is just a ton of scriptures. And this is is only the tip of the iceberg it is just vile truly allah loves those who fight in his cause and battle array as if they were a solid cemented structure allah only loves you if you are willing to shed blood for his cause i hope my muslim brothers can finally detect the obvious manipulations of muhammad for muslims to live peacefully as against their god islam will make you a terrorist murderer sexually immoral etc so don't be surprised anymore if you hear a muslim group doing a kidnapping for ransom raping captive girls 
girls blowing a building and chopping the body of non-Muslims and hypocrites. Those who believe fight in the cause of Allah and those who disbelieve fight in the cause of evil. So fight against the allies of Satan. Indeed, the plot of Satan has ever been weak. Here Allah accuses non-Muslims as the cause of evil. This verse is very deceiving. This is the reason why Muslims concluded that Islam is of God for it condemns Satan literally. Jesus predicted the coming of the prophets who will pretend to be sheeps, but deep inside they are wolves. Jesus advised his believers to examine the activity fruits of these people, whether they are of good or of evil origin. Murdering somebody inside of a church is of evil origin. Islam is doing evil, therefore this faith comes not from God, but rather from Satan. After all, Allah is the best of deceivers. In Quran 354, the same description of Satan describes in the Bible, Acts 13.10. They wish you would disbelieve as they disbelieve, so you would be alike. There is literally some atheists who do not believe at all, who are more morally just than the ones who believe in Allah. They don't murder. They have a moral compass. They don't strike their wives. They don't battle with lust or dream about it. So do you not take from among them allies until they emigrate for the cause of Allah? But if they turn away, then seize them and kill them wherever you find them. And take not from among them any ally or help. This is another verse that scares Muslims so that they won't leave their faith. You can join Islam anytime you like, but you can never leave. In the beginning of Islam, many left and some ridiculed Muhammad, prompting him to kill them via his avid followers and of course for his executioners to obey. Muhammad needed Allah's revelation like the verse above. I will cast terror into the hearts of those who disbelieve. Therefore, strike off their heads and strike off every fingertip of them. This verse is extremely brutal. It verifies that slaughtering alone is not enough to quench Allah's wrath. This God who claims the most merciful one wants the heads and every finger of non-believers to be cut off. Can you imagine that? What a merciful God. Their only sin is that they are not Muslims, right? Muslims think that God only created them or their religion tries to indoctrinate them to believe that God only created them when he created the earth. He was only thinking about Muslims. He was only thinking about Islamists. The rest of the world, no. When it comes to Christianity, it is strange if there is not diversity. It doesn't make sense. God in the Bible condemns violence and shedding of innocent blood. He says, their feet run to evil and they hasten to shed innocent blood. Their thoughts are thoughts of iniquity, devastation, and destruction are in their highways. The way of peace they know not have made themselves crooked paths. Whosoever goes in them shall not know peace. Isaiah 59, 7. This passage describes the deeds of the Muslims who fight in the cause of Allah. This God is lying and claiming that he is the most merciful and righteous, for there are numerous people who are not brutal and immoral. Obviously, these people are way more merciful and righteous than Allah. The above verse, that's what I'm saying. Even atheists are more righteous and merciful. The above verse also inspires criminals to spread terrorism for Muslims to condemn the brutal actions of the jihadists who are ignorant of your own faith because jihadists are the ones who obey the true commandment of Islam, right? That person who walked into the church is somebody who obeys the true commandments of Islam, unfortunately. Allah and his prophet call you hypocrites since you refuse to join the jihad. Allah will punish you. O ye who believe, when ye meet the unbelievers in hostile array, never turn your backs to them. Whoso on that day turneth his back to them, unless maneuvering for battle or intent to join a company, he truly hath incurred wrath from Allah, and his habitation will be held hapless. Journey's end. Comment. Muslims are not allowed to retreat from fight or else Allah will punish them in hell. This is how bitter and pitiful the believers in Islam are. They are caught in between fierce deaths, so it means those terrorists who ran away from the Christian military will be thrown into hell. Muhammad had formulated strategies in order to control his believers. First, he scared Muslims with his supposed God revelations if they refused to fight or leave Islam. Second, he incited the Muslim fighters by giving shares from their stolen wealth and sex with captive girls. Third, he assured paradise to the Muslim fighters, plus a bonus of 72 female spirits with volumes Sumptuous breasts and delicious ever virgin vaginas, and of course, to match with the ever virgin vaginas in Jana. Allah will also make the penises of jihadists ever erect. Just disgusting. He will fill his Jana with tons of orgy and poor jihadists. They will have trouble handling their forever erect penises. How disgusting. Jesus said that at the resurrection, people will be like angels in heaven. There will be no more marriages. Contrary to the teaching of Muhammad, sexual urge is driven by hormone. How can spirits desire sexually the teaching of Islam and fight with them until there is no more finta disorder unbelief and religion is all for Allah fight until religion is all for Allah this means that Muslims should fight Islamize all people on earth Allah commands the Muslims to eliminate all non-Muslims in the world through fighting and bloodshed this verse is one of the
the proofs that Islam is a religion of compulsion since Allah forced the people to accept his religion. So if you, Muhammad, gain the mastery over them in war, punish them severely in order to disperse those who are behind them so that they may learn a lesson. Common in this verse, Muslims are commanded by Allah to be brutal towards the non-Muslims whenever they have the advantage. This is the contrast with the verse 4732, where Muslims are commanded to be friendly wherever they are at a disadvantaged position. See how deceptive this Allah is? He teaches his believers how to trick other people. This is why you have to pray for these people and just show love because this is a huge deception. So when the sacred months have passed, then slay the idolaters wherever you find them and take them captive and besiege them and lie and wait for them in every ambush. Then if they repent and keep up prayer and pay the poor rate, leave their way free for them. Comment. Then slay the idolaters wherever you find them. Islamic apologists also use to say Muslims are just defending and forced to fight. The statement above never hints they are under attack. On the contrary, they are aggressors to ambush and idolatry non-Muslims suggest that the idolatry is unaware of the attack. Fight against them so that Allah will punish them by your hands and disgrace them and give you victory over them and heal the breasts of a believing people. Allah also commanded his fighters to disgrace non-Muslims. One of these disgraceful attacks is to rape their girls, including married ones. For Allah, the rapists and killers are nice people and the victims are the bad people. Allah tells his Muslims they are the nicest guys on earth. And the kafirs are apes and pigs. Those who believe and have left their homes and fought with their wealth and their lives in Allah's way are of much greater worth in Allah's sight there who are triumphant. Comment. This verse is another proof that Muslims are commanded to leave their homes and fight the non-Muslims and also Allah promises that the jihadists will go to paradise. On the other hand, those physically weak such as paralytic, sickly, or girly, it is impossible for them to enter into the Islamic paradise. So if you're crippled, diseased, the ones that Jesus Christ commands us to heal, take care of, you won't make it into heaven. So when you meet those who disbelieve, smite at their necks till when you have killed them and wounded many of them, then bind a bond firmly. Thereafter, set them free as a favor or let them ransom themselves until the war lays down its burdens. If it has been Allah's will, he himself could certainly have punished them without you, but he lets you fight in order to test you. Be barbaric. Some with others, but those who are killed in the way of Allah, he will never let their deeds be lost. So it is quite obvious that Christianity is the only way to heaven. And if that's the way to heaven, I don't want to go there. You are faithful. You are faithful.